Okay, the Tuesday Mind Emission on the Toad Cam in New York Toad City. Your brain, drugs, etc. Why do brains age? When people talk about frying their brains or um, stressing their brains or straining their brains, they're talking about a real process. The process is called neurodegeneration. And it can come in many forms. It can come from subtle changes in the way that the, the neurons and the glial cells perform their functions. They might age or have accelerated aging. And some parts of the brain do accelerate their aging. They age more rapidly than other parts of the brain, especially the dopaminergic parts of the brain, the parts of the brain that are related to Parkinsonism and movement disorders and motivation. So the aging brain is a, is a natural phenomenon. And when you put strains on the brain, and that could be from the overuse of drugs, especially the stimulants, the potent stimulant drugs like um, methamphetamine is a brain stressor par excellence. Cocaine is another powerful brain stressor. Now you might be asking, well what happens? What actually at a microphysiologic level is actually occurring in my brain at the level of my brain cells and within the brain cells and within the tiny little microscopic organs within the brain cells, the organelles called the mitochondria and the nucleus, things are happening. And when you apply external agents or factors to the brain, yes, you can, uh, you can induce a level of neurodegeneration. That's why I am strongly opposed to long duration drugs, drugs that keep you cranked, going, tripping balls, etc., for long periods of time. Okay, short acting drugs, short duration drugs, I'm more comfortable with. I'm not saying that they're perfectly free of effects or side effects, and they, they may still have stressor effects on the brain, but the likelihood of a 15 minute short trip um, and Please take this with a multiple grain of salt. A, uh, a short trip on the wrong stuff could probably do as much as a long trip on something else. I believe, in my personal opinion, that salvia is in the lower risk category. That doesn't mean it's risk-free, but it is not as risky as far as neurodegeneration is concerned as, say, tripping your balls off for 12 hours where you're totally disoriented. Why? You're asking, why, why might that be? Or what, what point might I consider about this? The culprit is actually calcium. And calcium acts as a signaling agent in the brain. Neurons, and I'm sure glial cells like astrocytes probably have their own mechanisms, neurons have multiple receptor sites. Among those sites are channels. Now, neurons have uh, uh, calcium channels and neurons have sodium channels and these channels allow uh, gradients of calcium and magnesium in the case of the calcium channel or sodium and potassium in the case of the, the sodium channel. What happens when you strain your brain, when you put your brain into a very high stress, hyper energized condition is you're opening up the calcium channels and calcium is pouring into the neurons which then causes the neurons to fire more, more rapidly. And neurons fire in a, they either fire or they don't. They're like on off switches. So all of a sudden you have this wave of neuronal firing. And this way, a strong enough wave of neuronal firing uh, will create uh, hallucinations, will create intense distortions of reality because you're kind of pushing the brain past its normal operating range. Now, a young brain a healthy brain has high calcium buffering capacity. That means within the brain cell it has a number of proteins that are related to something called the um, EF hand proteins, which are extremely ancient. These are some of the oldest proteins in your body. They actually go back to the Cambrian era, which is say 600 million years old. So you know these proteins were pretty well designed if they've last, lasted for 600 million years and you still have proteins in your brain which are very, very similar to the proteins you would find in a jellyfish. Um, these proteins within the brain cell soak up the excess calcium. So when you're having this wild experience, 
and the calcium comes pouring in and it starts creating different levels of sensitivity of other secondary types of receptors for the known neurotransmitters, you are slowly but surely flooding the the calcium sponges inside the brain cells which which buffer the calcium. There are organic calcium sponges which are the calcium binding proteins. There are inorganic phosphates. There are a number of mechanisms the brain cell has to quench this flood of calcium. And as the brain gets older and older and older, it loses, as we get into our 60s and our 70s and our 80s, we lose this capacity to bind calcium. We do not produce as many of the calcium binding proteins, and so we can't stabilize the flood of calcium as much, um, which means we need to supplement it. And there are definitely ways to do that. Um, I will very, very quickly mention to you, I, I personally take a lot of this stuff. It's called Prevagen. Uh, Prevagen I take the um, professional version, the 20 milligram, and um, I take a goodly amount of this. I take a, one or two of these during the day and usually four before I go to bed. It's, it's expensive stuff, but I think it's worth it because this is the, uh, this is the jellyfish protein from the, uh, the acorin protein. And it, believe it or not, absorbs very efficiently and is transported uh, apparently through what are called a series of chaperone proteins directly into the brain. And so you can directly reload your calcium buffers. So um, I think that you have to be understanding when you are, um, when you are putting your, your brain into a stressed situation, and if especially if you're putting your brain into a situation where it's stressed for a long time, multiple hours or days, you're going to slowly overwhelm the calcium buffering capacity. And the secondary result of that can actually be uh, cellular injury, cellular change, and if it's in a, a severe form of overwhelm, uh, something called apoptosis, where the cell basically digests itself and removes itself from circulation. So I would, I would uh, clearly find out about about Prevagen. I have no, no relationship with this company. Um, very few people know about this stuff. And it says, um, uh, basically, for a healthier brain. And what you're doing with this stuff is you're uh, feeding your brain uh, the jellyfish proteins, the calcium binding proteins, uh, protein in the jellyfish. And um, rumor has it that because this, this is actually a phosphorescent protein, it, it glows blue-green. That's why you can see the jellyfish in the seawater glowing blue-green. If you take this stuff, it's a, there is a possibility that your brain is literally uh, faintly glowing blue-green after you take it. But I think for anyone, especially us old geezers who are um, kind of pushing, pushing the boundaries, it's a good thing to know about uh, what's happening with uh, calcium, calcium buffering, calcium binding. Because uh, calcium is a good neurotransmitter, but it's also the reason that brains age and it's the reason that brains fall apart. We can no longer manage the, the, fl the flow of calcium from the extracellular matrix into the cell.